Okay, we are going to talk some Barnsley now. And this is a funny one to get your head around. So we've called on Andy from um, Red All Over. Now, the question is, with where Barnsley are now, compared to where they were last season, is it fair and reasonable to judge this season's Barnsley against an outstanding but very surprising season that possibly in the fullness of time, might look like a bit of an outlier. Where are you with expectations versus what's going on under shop in 22nd position against that ridiculously good season last year? I, th- I think fans are split on it, really. Obviously, expectations were higher. And, you know, the, 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 we've got the youngest squad in the championship. Um and we've seen that for a couple of seasons, they've gradually been growing up and getting more uh, more experienced and what have you. And last season, you know, some people think it's, you know, we should kick on from that, and we should have really. So some expectations are that we should have been automatic in the automatic places or at the very, very least in the um, in the in the playoffs now and, and at the end of the season. Uh, a number of us, though, expected us to drop a little bit, you know, and regroup because, you know, we lost a few people. Uh, and uh, and uh, mid mid table or just just above mid table would be an acceptable season. Remember, we've lost to Forest. We've lost the um, our chief chief executive and his sidekick to West Brom. We've lost the uh, the head coach, three other people plus plus the captain. And yesterday we lost um, our head physio and goalkeeping coach. So there's a lot a lot of changes behind the scenes that it. it bewildering at times um it's sim- simply benjamin it's it's not been good enough this season uh so far this season it's the same players what i think the vast majority of fans uh, are feeling and I, I, I suppose i can only really talk for myself but what what we get from well, on the red all over show from a lot of fans is that they're not blaming the players they um some some people blame blame the board and the owners but a lot of people are blaming the head coach um, because it, we can't see what the pl- everybody says that we haven't got a plan B. We haven't got a plan B. A lot of us are saying we haven't even got a plan A. So it's 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 looking it's looking really disjointed, and the players the players to us look confused. We start games well, so we set up reasonably well, um, but then we start making changes and moving players into different positions. We've got players playing in different positions than the, you'd expect them to be. Um, and it all looks a bit. It all looks a bit of a mess and incredibly disjointed. The players are decent players. Some of them are really, really good players, but the, the, there doesn't seem to be any support for them out on the pitch. That they look as confused as we are sometimes. So where's this all heading then? Because there is, I guess, the the mitigating factor of, like you mentioned, so no DK, no Moat. Yeah. No Dane Murphy, no uh, Ishmael. Um, I understand the um, if what you're seeing on the pitch is is not good, then that that's a, that's a side issue. How long and um, what is a reasonable time, and what do you need to see to be saying, okay, I think this is what he's trying to do, and you know this might just be a season where just just hold. Hold, hold in the division and move forward. What do you, what do you need to see? I think we, 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 we certainly not seen passion, uh, not, not seen passion. We are seeing passion from the players at the start. They get, you know, the, the, they're not, they're not messing about with it. They're trying the hardest. Um, what we're not seeing as, as, as progress or where we're going, we, we, we're not, we're not seeing any, any plan in action. I appreciate it's been really difficult right at the start for, for Marcus Shop. In that, right at the start of the season, we had eight or nine players out. Whether it's been, you know, through through injury, through visas not coming through, and we still got a few players out. Um, you know, Mads Anderson was immense for us in defence last season, uh, and we, we we brought in um, Obi Ulari, who's who's not played, and you know the the latest you know the latest stuff seems to be that he's not going to be playing for the foreseeable future, and he's a big tall striker, the big target man, the new Daryl DK. We hoped, but is is not getting you know is 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 not getting there. We just want to see a plan about where we're going, 
and nobody is. People are, people are feeling me especially that the only way is down. There's only one outcome that's gonna that, that needs to happen, uh, and that we we've signed a manager or a chief coach that that does not fit with what we're trying to do. We for a number of seasons, you know, whether it were Daniel Stendel and then Gerhard Struber and, and then last season, as you know, uh, Valerian Ishmael, we, we signed or appointed head coaches, managers um, to play a specific style. We, we decided as a club on a specific style, which were a high press, get up the field quickly and put, put defenders under pressure. And it, it's, it worked throughout those seasons. In the main, it worked. Um, this time, we're not doing uh, Marcus does not seem to play that sort of style. Um, we're passing it more, and sometimes the passing's pretty decent. But in the final third, uh, as one of the players, one of the players has said recently, there's not enough work being done on the patterns in the final third of the field. It's just off the cuff stuff, and not enough players getting in the box. Nobody seems to know what they're supposed to be doing properly in the, in the last third of the, in the last third of the field, and it, it's. It's so frustrating for fans because we have got one of the best strikers in the division in Coley Woodrow, uh, and, and we've signed um, Aaron uh, Aaron Leia um, Iseka, and he looked really good against uh, against uh, Millwall. It's the first time he's, he's, he's had a proper a proper go at it, uh, and of course um, Devante Cole made his first start, which has been baffling everybody uh, that he's not been playing, and, and he had a good start, but then. You know, we made the substitutions. Uh, they both came off, and we looked back to what we are—a team that don't look like it's going to score. So it's very, very frustrating, and we need to get back. Sometimes, you know, we've got to accept that sometimes things don't fit. You know, players don't fit with certain with, with certain clubs. With our club, sometimes they do. Head coaches sometimes fit, and we've been very fortunate recently. I think in the in the coaches that we've had, and. I think most people, me included, feel that this time it's a poor fit. So I, I don't see anything other than we need to start afresh and get our mojo back, really. Mm, interesting. Um, let's try and try and get some positives out of you, Andy. Um, talk to me about um, maybe if you can single out one player who you have sort of been happy with, because last season, the likes of Helic and Styles and... Moat and DK were not just seen as star players for Barnsley, yeah. but star players in the in the whole division, weren't they? Um, who who is carrying the load at the moment at Barnsley? It's it's not all doom and gloom, but by any means, we we as you've said, we've got Mikhail Helic at the centre of defence, and he's an outstanding player. While he's been with us, he's become a full Polish international, and you know, really, really pleased for him. Alongside of him, we but we signed. We signed towards the end of last season, but he was injured, so he only played in the last match. We signed Liam Kitchen, and he's had a good season so far. He's, he's, he's a, a strong defender, and so he's done really, really well. Um, you've said, and you, you've mentioned, um, uh, what's it, uh, Callum Styles. Ca Callum, I feel a bit for because he's a really, really clever player. He gets stuck in. Is good on the ball. He's got good vision. Everything, good shot, and all that. All last season, he played at left wing back. Now, so last season, we were crying for him to come and play in the centre midfield because he's. I think by by, by trade, this is a, this is a long running narrative with Styles and centre midfield, yeah. isn't it? And to be honest, it, 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 I think he does all right in centre midfield. But we need him. We need him on the uh, as, as it stands. As the, as the left wing back, we've got other options in the centre midfield, um, so we, we would be stronger with him out there. But he's a he's a he's a smashing young player, absolutely smashing young player. And of course, the the player that's getting all the plaudits and rightly so for some incredible performances as our goalkeeper Brad Collins. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. He's doing really well because he's keeping Jack Walton out, and Jack Walton's a really good goalkeeper as well. But you can't. Brad Collins has been incredible this season. You know, there's been times when we've drawn when we could easily have lost by two or three I or four. Did, I did this. I did the Stoke game, and yeah, that oh, was yeah. A, that was a defeat in everything other than result, wasn't it? But what I will say is, um, after watching five years of Mick McCarthy at Ipswich, and the goalkeeper was um, 
player of the year for three seasons in a row. You, <laughs> you, you want you want an outfield player to be your player of the year. Um, is you there do. a standout performance so far? I thought you looked really good in the first half at QPR, but it wasn't really a whole performance, was it? And the the win against Coventry, they missed a the penalty right at the end, didn't they? As well, is there a performance you can a whole performance you can hang your hat on so far out of the first eleven? Well, sometimes it's a sublime to the ridiculous. Against Coventry, it's our only victory this season against Coventry at home. And to be frank, we shouldn't have won it. They, they were a, they're, they're a good side, Coventry. Re- mm-hmm. Matt Robbins is, you know, one of our ex-managers has really got really got them on on, on the ball. Uh, yes, at QPR, we, we didn't expect much to be honest. But at QPR, the first half, we were really, really good, and you, we thought everybody, I think, thought in that first half that. We finally turned the corner and we're now seeing what we're supposed to be seeing and where we're supposed to be going. It was crisp. The passing was good. We put QPR under a lot of pressure. Second half, they come at us. We changed it. We put two centre-halves in the centre of midfield. And it's just... It, it's <laughs> I think we had five centre-halves on the pitch. And it, it just fell apart because, you know... the. We, we changed a winning mentality and it, uh, you know, sometimes you've got to change as, as players get tired and what have you, but we just, cha- it felt as though we just changed to try and shore it up and it were, it was abominable. And that's not against the two players that came on in the centre midfield because they're not bad players. I've got a lot of, it, one of them was Jasper Moon, who's a young lad who I think needs to be taken out of the firing line a little bit at the minute. Um, and there was Apo Halm. Oh, I think it's a really good, really good player. Whether it's in midfield or in defence, he's mainly a defender, um, and it's it's just such a shame that you know you you can't play a game with five centre halves on the pitch. It's just getting, and it's just getting a bit, it's just getting a bit silly, really. And we, you know, it, it were unfortunate that we were an injury time equaliser, but it was truthfully inevitable, and and, and that's coming, the bit it? that we find in difficult to to stomach, really. There you go. Well, it was. Great for a A few seasons ago, we beat, um, when we got promoted, promoted, we beat Fulham at Oakwell 1-0 in the first match and then didn't win a game. I remember. Yeah. Luke, Luke Thomas scored, didn't he? Yeah, he came, yeah, he came, right. came to Ipswich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on our show, we kept harking, we were a radio show at the time, we kept harking back to, well, we beat Fulham though. We did, <laughs> but you can't. So at the minute, you know, you can't keep saying, We've we've had a good half against QPR. Oh, at this rate, we're going to be saying it till Christmas again, mm. and that's that can't be right. That's got to change. Well, it's funny yeah. you should mention Christmas because that was going to be my next question, and um, I've been asking everybody if we were to meet again. Um, there's always that nice week where we get up to game twenty three before it goes mental over Boxing Day and all of that good stuff. Um, are you going to be higher? Or lower, and bear in mind, there's only two places lower, and we potentially <laughs> might have somebody else with a points deduction very soon. We think as well. So yeah. surely, um, Barnsley are going to move up at least a place from 22nd by Christmas, aren't they? Well, we're a bit. Of, I don't wish. I don't wish ill on any club, and and and, I, <laughs> and I, I, you know, you want to do it on your own merit, don't you? I mean, we we were very fortunate. A couple of seasons ago, to benefit from uh, uh, a twelve-point deduction for Wigan, and we, we felt for the fans. But you know, financial fair play rules are there for a reason. You know, people have got to abide by the rules. And but it was a shame for the fans because we got you know Wigan's a town very similar to us, so that's a shame. Um, I, I I would hope that we're going to be a bit higher. It depends. Right, it depends. Albert Einstein said that it's a sign of insanity. If you keep doing the same thing time and time again, (laughs) expecting a different outcome. And that's what we're doing at the minute. We just keep doing the same old, same old and expecting something different to happen. I ain't going to. It isn't going to. I I don't want to rely on, I really don't want to rely on on any problems for any other clubs. I mean, as it stands, we're not scoring and we've won one. It don't matter if if, if we had five clubs getting 12-point deductions or something like that. They still could catch us. The, the way it's going at the minute, so it's got to change within our own club. Not not hope that other people suffer. So I don't want that. That's not right. I don't want that. 
No, absolutely right. You, you, you'll be like me with the tweet notifications turned on for the EFL. That is a, that is just part of my life, I'm afraid. It has to be done. Um, right, let's do this then, Andy. I've asked everybody for yeah. a grade. You can go from A to E. I sense yours is going to be rather low, though. Oh, it could have been an A. Uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> um, it, it depends it depends who you're grading. If we're grading the players, I would say a C because they're trying, but they could, you know, we, we could always do better. Um, but if we're talking about the coaching, the support, the guidance that young players are getting, young players need that support, arm around the shoulder, they need guidance. What our man or our head coach has been doing, as in some of his interviews, as chucking them under the bus. So for him, for that, I would definitely give Marcus Shop an E. Crikey. Can we can we land in the middle between the players and the coach at a D somewhere? Or is it going to be more, more like a D minus uh, or something? Uh, it's, it, all told, it's an E, but that's oh, not not the, the players have got to know what they're doing. You, you can't you can't be as, as confused and bewildered and be doing it off the cuff in the final third, not enough players in the box. You're not going to score with the lowest scoring team at this minute. We can, you know, we've got players missing. You know, Carlton Morris were great for us last year. He's injured and what have you. We need him to come back, uh, but we need him to come back right. You know, we don't want him to come back too early and then be injured again because that that, that could be game over. But it's, it's got to be better than this. There you go. Brilliant stuff, um, Andy. Can you give us give us a bit of a plug for um, Red All Over? You can see the shirt in the background. Where can we find that? <laughs> Uh, strategically placed, Benjamin. Strategic. Oh, well, uh, I've just gone with an Ipswich <laughs> Town scarf there, and then people go, "What are you doing the championship for?" Ipswich aren't in the championship; they were once. There you go. Uh, where oh, can like we find red all over anyway? One of my best mates is uh, Steve, is uh, an Ipswich Town fan, lives out in Sardinia, and uh, so I get all right regularly. For some. Paul, well, yeah, yeah, always been there for many years. And you've got Connor, Connor Chaplin, which we really, really, really like to oak well, and of course. In our area, Paul, you know, Paul Cook's been a manager in our area with Chesterfield, as well as uh, subsequently at Wigan, and uh, he's a great manager, a great man. I wish we'd have appointed him, to be honest. So, anyway. there's, a, there, there's a lot of links. It feels like we've been linked since the since that playoff final, which um, uh, which we won in in 2000. But yeah, there's there's plenty of yeah. sort of back and forth. Um, but but yeah. the the channel, um, YouTube and Patreon, yes. Yeah, that's right. It's the, the Red All Over Show. It started off life as a uh, as a as a, a radio show on on a, on a local radio station called commercial station called Dern FM, and it was run by um, well Joe Beardsall, who's still still running it. When the station was taken over by um, a, a, a national company, it, it gradually faded away and, and was closed down. So at the start of last season, so just over a year ago. Joe asked if we could, if we wanted to continue it as a YouTube show, and so we thought, well, we'll see how it goes. You know, if nobody's interested, then that's that. Um, so we did, and we tried to since the start of last season. It was helpful that uh, it was a good season last season, and I suppose also, you know, with a lot of fans say that, you know, with with with, with the the lockdown that they wanted to feel connected to the club. So we got quite a few quite a few viewers then. We have a mixture of trying to be, well, some of us trying to be intelligent about analysis and some of us <laughs> just act a bit daft, really, sometimes. Um, we've known each other a long while, so there's a lot of banter between the four main people and the others that come in, but the four main people. We have a lot of banter, but we you know, we take it very seriously. We try to do a, a preview show. We try to do an aftermatch show. Um, sometimes, sometimes instant reactions this season have not been, not been great reactions because it's gone really badly but we've gradually grown and, and that's really nice to see gradually grown. and yesterday we hit which is incredible for us uh, you know a year on we've hit um 1800 subscribers which which is lovely and the viewing figures are going up and up and up and it's humbling it's humbling benjamin absolutely humbling that people want to listen to two young guys you know joe was running it Josh, who's a young guy who's good analysis, he thinks he should be the new Barnsley manager because he's good at, <laughs> he's good, he's good at football manager on the Xbox. Um, and then me and Alan Smith, who are both in our, well, both 60, 67 and have known each other for 62 years and have been going to work well for that time. So, you know, we're just a pair of, well, we're the Statler and Waldo for Barnsley Football Club. There you go. Brilliant <laughs> stuff. Go go and check it out. Um 
Yeah, I hope it picks up, Andy, because it was such Thank a you. such a brilliant um, story last season. And, yeah. you know, with the, um, I mean, I moan about it a lot with the way the money's distributed. It's great to have a Barnsley in the playoffs um, every now and then. So yeah. maybe it might be someone else's go this season. But um, uh, good luck to you. And um, thanks for coming on, Andy. In fact, in fact, be back at Christmas and I'll, I'll provide the tissue. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks, stuff. Benjamin.